Hi everyone, it's Cheryl, and I've got a couple things here this morning. Um, I just received my Valentine card in a swap I was doing um, with Becky at Aunt Beck's Creations. Becky, dear, yours is on the way, hon. Um, we've had some freezing rain around here the past couple days, so I don't know if it slowed the mail down or not, but but uh, it's on the way, and it will be there hopefully by Valentine's for you. Um, I'm not going to show the whole front of this envelope because Becky's address is on here. But uh, as you can see, she has made her envelope. Um, it's just awesome, a little Valentine sticker on the back. And I was waiting uh, for on the video to go ahead and open this up. And I know she's been showing some of the ones she's made, and oh, they are fantastic. Oh my gosh. So now I'm just really excited to see which one I got. And I'm just going to try to slip right here along the top of the envelope. It feels pretty full, so... So... Hang in there a minute with me, and I'm going to try to get this open very carefully. I do not want to cut the card. But there felt like there was enough room right up here at the top where I could just slit the envelope open. And this envelope would be great to put like in my, one of my junk journals for myself or something, so... That is really cool. Alright, let's see what I have here. I'm so excited. <laughs> she makes the most gorgeous cards. They are just awesome. So I'm really excited about sharing them with you. Um, I'm not excited about sharing them with you. Thank you. Bye. This is not for you. Okay, I just got a little note in here. Thank you, Becky. Thank you very, very much. All right, let's see what she sent. Oh my gosh. Oh, this one is so pretty. Can you guys see that? Let me zoom out just a little bit. Oh, look at this. And she hand colored the whole thing. Oh, and she's got all this little bling around the edge. And it looks like a heart shaped doily in the back. Oh, Becky, this is just, this is just fantastic. You do such a beautiful job coloring. Oh, she's got a little kitty. <laughs> I bet that kitty's better than crafting kitty. And she's put, oh, and even a little Valentine ribbon here on the bottom. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous card, Becky. Oh my gosh, I am so excited. Oh, and it looks like she's used some glossy accents maybe there on the eyes. Beautiful. I hope you guys can see this because this is just a gorgeous, gorgeous card she's made. Oh, wow. Thank you, Becky, so much. You know, this is my first swap, and I'm not really a card maker, but I had a lot of fun doing this, so... Then it just says, Happy Valentine's Day on the inside. Isn't that just neat? Oh, thank you, Becky. You made my day. Awesome. Thank you so very much. Oh, wow. <laughs> just so cool. We get some happy mail there. Um, yeah. And I love that card. Oh, my gosh. You are fantastic, Becky. Um, I'm putting my heat gun in right now, so... Just a second here, if I can get it plugged in my power strip. Oh, why can't I get that in there? Huh. Lovey, what'd you do to the power strip, huh? Did you make it so I can't get it? Oh. Well, if I plug it in the right way, that would help a lot, wouldn't it? No. I hate polarized plugs, the ones with the one big side. I wish I'd just go back to the standard plugs. All right, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Um... First of all, before I start uh, my tutorial, and you are not going to help me, thank you very much. Goodbye, go eat, go out, go, go be with your friends. Um, I would like to thank, once again, Gareth for setting up the Facebook channel, uh, Made It Myself Miniatures, which I am inviting all of you out there that haven't joined yet to come and join us and see what we're about. We're kind of just getting started, but I promise you it's going to go places. Um, also... Denise Moore, who volunteered to, well, I asked her, but she said yes, of course. You're a sweetie, Denise. Um, she, she also is one of the administrators of the channel. And uh, so all of you who haven't joined yet that would like to, please come on over to Facebook. Um, it's Made It Myself Miniatures and join. We would love to have you. And for those of you who have already joined, welcome. And we're glad to have you. Uh, Anyway, what this video is about is I had a couple of my subbies, um, Jody Holiday and Jacinta Legal, 
Um, I hope I said your name right. Um, they both ask if I would share my tutorial for doing my um, used baby wipe flowers. And of course I'm happy to. Uh, like I said before, I'm pretty sure somebody else has probably already done this. Um, so I'm not claiming it as an original idea. And the flower designs, I have looked all over the internet. I have found flowers here and there that I really liked. And so I have used them, and I can't remember exactly who put the posts up. But thank you, whoever you were. And uh, yeah, so none of this is my original design, I'm sure. And I'm not going to take credit for it. So anyway, let me show you what, how I did this. And for the for those of you who may not know, Jacinta is Mildred's sister, and she, like Mildred, makes the most gorgeous cards I've ever seen. So if you haven't checked out her channel, it's Jacinta Legal, and capital L E capital G A L L. I hope I hope I got that right, Jacinta. Uh, she makes just as beautiful of cards as her sister Mildred. Um, so be sure to check her channel out if you haven't. Um, all right, how I did my flowers, um, I did mine in two parts, okay, since your baby wipe is, and I'm going to have to get out another baby wipe because I had to ink up some to even do this tutorial. I didn't have any more because I'd been throwing them out. Um, yeah, As Josie Gito says, don't throw anything out. And by the way, speaking of Josie, we were chatting on Facebook yesterday, and uh, she told me that next week she is going to be using her used baby wipes to uh, make yo-yos out of. Now, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the yo-yo quilts, but it's where you take the circle of fabric, I, I believe this is what she means, and then you gather up around one edge of it and you pull it tight and you make the little circles with the little gathered tops. My grandma had a quilt made out of those and they were about one inch and it's like, I was always amazed, how did she ever, you know, have the patience to do that, but my grandmother was very good with needle, needle sewing, needle crafts, and all that. Of course, she was born in 1893, so you know that was an age when women still did a lot of needlework and basically were taught to do that. So, but yeah, it was it was it was a gorgeous, gorgeous quilt, and all the time and work that went into it. But anyway, check out it's Josie Gito if you are not familiar with Josie G I T T O here on YouTube. And she'll be doing some things with these baby wipes next week, the yo-yos. Uh, so please check out Josie's channel and for that. Um, okay, a baby wipe, and this is a wet one because, like I said, I had to ink up a couple. Um, these are 6 by 7 so it's just barely a rectangle. Um, and I got mine at Dollar Tree, a little Snoopy on them, a little Snoopy. Um, and, it, you know, of course, it cost me a whole dollar, and there's so many wipes in here, so if you want to, you know, use the ink and, and a little bit of thread and stuff, you can have 70 flowers for a dollar, if you want it. Um, <laughs> anyway, what I did was I laid mine out the long way, and then I fold it. I fold part of it up, and I like to leave about an inch and a half to an inch and three-quarter down here. Um, I'm pretty sure that's not exactly an inch and three quarter or whatever, but I just fold it in half because I can get one flower out of a baby wipe this way. So what I do um, is I cut off this, the part that's not folded first, and this is going to be our smaller flower center. Okay, it's going to be like the part you see right there. Um, and then I take and I take the piece that I folded over and I also cut that in half the long way. So those are going to be all wet. Okay, so then you have you have two pieces like this, and don't you know don't stress if you don't cut them exactly even. It's not going to matter. Now I tried this because I have been making mine in two parts. I tried this morning sewing the two pieces together to make one longer piece of baby wipe. I myself did not care for that. You can do it. I did not care for it because then I had to be, I had to watch, you know, my seam line when I cut my uh, baby wipe because, you know, on the scalloped ones, I go ahead after I sew it together and then I cut the scallops on it. And the other one, um, like this one I use pinking shears on, so I had to cut the loops on the flower. 
And so I did not like having to watch out for that seam because I cut the seam on one of them that I was trying out. So, but if you want to sew yours into a long, you know, one long strip, that's fine. Just please be very careful that you don't cut your seam where you sewed them together. Okay, and guess what? I just threw out that baby wipe. Bad me. Okay. All right, so the first thing I did, and I'm going to show you how to do the two-part ones. You would do the single ones the exact same way, only when, and I will show you when you get to the end how you would handle that instead. Okay, somewhere here I've got a needle. And I am using a really big needle just so that you can see what I'm doing here in the video. Let me try to... Oh, my camera's way loose on this tripod. Let me see if I can uh, zoom it in a little bit here. I don't want to get too close. But, and excuse my hands because I, I did have to ink some up because I didn't have any. All right, I'm going to start with a small piece that I cut. Um, and what I did was I just folded it in half the long way, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my needle in. And please be careful, the, if you're using a big needle, your knot that you make in the end of your thread will pull through the baby wipe. Um, you can use a double thread or you can use single. I'm using single, um, but if you want to double your thread, that's personal choice. So what I've done is I pulled it up to where the knot is, and then I'm just going to go and I'm going to... Oh, this Walmart thread's terrible. I don't like it. I am going to... I just went right through my same hole and my not fell out. Okay, so I'm going to make one next to where I just did that one. I'm sorry, you guys. Um, I'm going to pull it up, and then I'm going to go through it again, and I'm going to have this loop left on my thread. And what I'm going to do is feed the needle up through that loop, and thread my needle. Oh, why does nothing go right when you're doing it for a video? <laughs> just a minute, please. I need to re-thread my needle. Okay. And I'm, I'm just going to take another stitch or two here just, just to make sure this is held. All right, one thing you want to remember with your baby wipe, once they dry out, they're going to tear easier, so you don't want to pull on them really hard or anything like that. Now what we're going to do is just put the needle in and anywhere from probably an eighth to a quarter of an inch from the edge. Um, depends, you know, on just how big you want your flower. You're just going to take your needle and just run through with just a regular running stitch. Okay. Uh, don't worry if your stitches aren't quite even. That is not going to make a difference at all in these flowers. And we're just going to keep doing that until we get to the end. So I'm just going to try to do this really quick. I don't do a lot of hand sewing anymore. Um, I used to, back in the day, back in the mid-80s to the mid-90s, I used to uh, make the reproductions of the antique porcelain dolls. I've always loved dolls. And I used to, we poured our own bisque, we molded them, we cleaned them, we made our own composition for the bodies and fired those and everything. And, and it was really fun, but it was not a, it did not catch on around here. So eventually I gave it up. I still have the molds um, and stuff like that, but eventually I just gave it up because it just wasn't profitable to keep doing it. Okay, I've got my running stitch. I hope you can, I don't know if you can see that or not, but I've got it through there, and I do have some holes because I was experimenting with this one earlier, so anyway, I have my running stitch. Now, first I'm going to show you how to make the flower like this with the loops, okay? So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just going to cut, and you can cut a quarter inch or a little smaller or even bigger if you want. And I'm just making snips. Ah, oh, these scissors aren't very good for this, and I can't find my scissors. What I'm doing basically is I'm just making snips, but I want to be careful not to cut the stitching I put in. So, and I tend to get carried away. So I'm going to try my hardest here not to snip my, snip my stitching. Oh, you guys. We have got freezing rain here. We had freezing rain a little bit yesterday. Today it's actually raining, and I tell you what, you step outside the door and it's like you're in an ice skating rink, and ice skating, even with ice skates, has never been my thing, so not exactly too fun. Uh, yeah, it's kind of nasty out there. We weren't supposed to get a whole lot, but 
I don't know anymore. The weather predictions around here, they say one thing and you end up with something else anyway, so. I think it's kind of like back to the old days. Stick your head out the door, see what it's doing, and, you know, go from there. Okay, now, I just had to re-thread my needle. Um, with this one, what I did with the small flower, since I know this is going to be my center, is I am just going to gather this up. Is that my small one? I have had too many pieces of uh, baby wipe around here. Okay, you go with that one. <laughs> these, are, these are pretty close to the same color, so I may have one. Hmm. Okay, yeah. Maybe this is one of my bigger ones. Uh -oh. Let me fold this one a half. Okay, I started with one of the bigger pieces. I thought I had one of the smaller ones. But, and with flowers like this where you're doing it in two halves, you can go ahead and gather it all the way up. Okay. And then just take your needle and secure your stitching. But do not join your edges together. Because this, this is the two-part one. And like I said, you can sew your baby wipe together to make one long strip. And in the event you were doing that with the one long strip, you would gather this up not this tight. Okay, I've got this one pretty tight. But you would gather it not quite this tight because you want some room to move and even out your gathers. And then you would take your two edges where you started and you finished and you would put them together and then you would stitch over and over and lock them together and if you wanted you could take with your first two petals of your flower here and you could glue those together but since this is a two-part flower I'm not going to be doing that all right I have one half now you can go ahead right ahead and glue this down right away if you want um, which I'm gonna do if my glue gun's ready and I think it's I think it's ready. Oh, this glue. I don't like this glue gun. I don't like this glue. But that's my problem. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take about halfway, and this is a one-inch felt circle I've cut out. I'm going to take this just about halfway on here, and I'm just going to run a line of glue around the edge. Now, you don't have to put your flower right out to the edge, and I'm hoping you can see this. I'm just going to take my flower, and I'm just going to stick it on there, okay? And I'm going to try to, you know, just eyeball it. Don't, you know, don't be exact, and don't fuss if it's not exact. Um, I barely got that one on the edge. And another thing, um, unless your hot glue is pretty fresh on here, your baby wipe is going to rip if you have to take the flower back off. So something to keep in mind. Okay, so I have half of my, like this, I have half of my flower around my, and it's not going to matter if these two edges here overlap. That's not going to be a big deal. So I'm going to go ahead really quick and fold my other, piece here, get a knot in my thread, not that it does much good, um, fold up my other piece the long way, horizontally, like so, and then I'm just going to go ahead and do this one just like I did the other one. I know it's hard to see. I probably should have used a darker thread with this so that you could see better. I know Fiona at Jennings 644 here on YouTube, she uh, makes beautiful, beautiful flowers and she always uses black for her tutorial and that's probably what I should have done, but I wasn't thinking. Oh, I got over the flu and now thanks to this weather. It was 50 degrees the other day, warm, beautiful out, and now we're heading back into temperatures that are going to be like around 17 or so. We've got this freezing rain. We've got a lot of wind out there today, and my sinuses, which are usually bad anyway, um, decided to go ahead and get a lot worse. So, excuse me, if my voice is a little funkier than it usually is, um, my nose is stuffed. And while it was doing that, it decided it had to settle in my jaw. So I'm kind of swollen up on the right side. Not fun. But it is better today than it was yesterday. So, all right. I've got my line of stitching in here. And while this is flat, before I gathered it up, I'm going to go ahead and, again, I'm going to be making my snips in here, being careful not to cut my stitching. Don't worry if you get the petal parts exactly even because that's not going to matter. I wish I had a better pair of scissors. Now I can't find my sewing scissors. I have no idea where they went. 
Hopefully no one grabbed them and used them for anything other than sewing. And nobody else around her sews, so that means they would get used for paper if someone took them. And I'm just gonna snip all of these. fingers in the way here. I'm trying to hold on to this baby wipe. I don't want to pull too tight and rip it. Alright, there we go. And again, I'm just going to take my needle and thread. I'm going to pull this one up. I'm going to, whoops, there we are. I'm just going to take it and I'm just going to gather it really tight. And I'm just going to take a few stitches. I'm going to lock my stitches here on this side. I'm just going to bring up a loop of my thread, stick my needle through, for anyone who may not be familiar with that, and that will lock your stitches down. Cut off your thread, get your glue gun, and I'm going to overlap, I'm going to overlap my uh, my petals on both sides, just, just the first petal, and I don't have this on even. I don't know if I can straighten that out. Oh, I guess that one just wasn't wasn't glued down. Ouch. My fingers in the hot glue. Don't do that. I am just going to overlap those. And these like to twist on you, so just be careful they don't twist up on you. When you go to glue them down, I'm getting my fingers in the glue. Okay. All right. So now I have something that looks like this. Okay. And I might have left just a little bit too big of a spot in the center of mine, but we'll deal with that. Okay, so now I'm going to take the smaller piece I have and I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to fold it in half the long way. I'm going to take a needle and thread here, and I don't know, I hope I have enough thread left here. I think I should. Oh, if I can get the thread thread, or get a knot in my thread here. Alright, and I'm just going to do the exact same thing. I'm just going to try to get my Try to get my edges as even as possible. I'm just going to come up with my thread, unthread my needle. Seems to be my favorite thing here today. All right, come up. I have my tail back there, and you can trim all your tails or your thread and stuff off when you get done gathering up your flower. Just going to take a couple stitches in here and. And then I'm going to go and I'm just going to do my running stitch along. And we're, we're stitching along the open edge, okay, where we put the two edges together. Because if we're going to do the flower with the loops, we're going to want the other edge that's folded to be, you know, like we're going to want that folded edge because then we our loops won't you know, we'll have loops. Let's put it that way. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm kind of out of it. I've kind of got a fever today with this. And I was so excited last night with the Facebook group. And you know what is really the coolest to me is how excited you guys are about this. Wow. <laughs> what a response. Um, you guys are so excited. And it's just contagious, you know. I mean, I'm loving it. But... You know, the, the the excitement and you guys, your excitement and stuff. I was really tired for once last night. I Thank you. I've been not sleeping. I've been used to staying up later. And I went to bed last night, and I slept really well. So thank you, guys. Um, I got worn out just from you guys' excitement. I mean, it, it was, everybody was just so happy and so excited. I think I stayed on my computer most of the day. Um, I didn't get much else done. And I'm just now, I'm just once again trimming my edges um, just like I did on the other part of the flower. But yeah, you guys, you guys had me going. I was like so excited. And every, every new member that joined, you know, it was just like, oh, was like all excited all over again. And you know, I know this group is, Garrett put it in my name when he set it up. 
But you know what? This is our group, okay? All of us. Um, I don't like things being just mine. I'm a very sharing type of person, so... It's our group, and it's going to be what we decide to make it. Okay, so that's my thoughts. Okay, what I'm doing on this one now is I'm going to bring... Whoops, I'm sorry, I'm standing up. I'm going to bring both of my edges together on this one, and I'm going to pull it up good and tight, and I'm just going to take my needle, and I'm going to go through, make a loop, catch that, and just take another stitch or two to lock the stitches in. Okay? Like so, and I'm going to cut that off. Um, all right, so what we've got is this, and you want to just, you know, straighten your little gathers around so you don't have really tight gathers on one side. I'm not going to glue my, my start and finish together. You could if you wanted to. You could, I'm sorry. You could glue that together, but you don't have to, okay? And I'm not, I'm not going to because on this particular flower, it does not really show. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take my glue gun, and I've got, I've got too big of an opening in the middle of this flower, so you might want to come in a little bit with, with yours when you place it on your felt. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this little flower and I'm just going to try my best to get it pretty much centered in there. Um, I'm a little bit off because of because I got it, I had my my original part of my flower, the big part, too far out. Um, but then you can go through and you can just, you know, kind of fluff up. Ah, oh, my glue is still a little st sticky there. You can kind of fluff it up. You can, you know, like so. And that'll give you a more full look to your flower. And you know, you could, if you wanted to use more than just one baby wipe, I'm just using one baby wipe, you know, to do this. Um, if you want to use more than one baby wipe, you could make a really puffy flower. Uh, let's see. I need to find something for centers. I don't have a whole lot of bling. This one's not going to be very exciting. This is a button. It's a button that's kind of wrapped with cloth. White cloth. Ah, I'm dropping it, and I'm sticking it all over everything but the flower. Oh, this glue. All these strings. Ugh. Never again am I buying that. Anyway, there you go. Like I said, my center is not very exciting. Now, if you want the flower with the edges that I did with the pinking shears, you would cut, you, you would take your pinking shears, and before you gather it up to put it on your flower, just cut along the edge with your decorative scissors, and that'll make a nice decorative edge on it. Um, I use pink and shears on this one, and it will come out like that. But cut those. Cut it. You can you can even cut it before you go ahead and make your little slits in for your loops on these flowers if you want, or you can make your slits first and then cut your edge. It doesn't matter, or you can leave it just loopy like this one. Okay. Now I will show you how to do the ones with the rounded petals, um, and. I got some lace off that I was going to put in it, and I'm going to use about 12 to 14 inches of, and I'm just using this lace because it was the first I found. Um, I'm just going to be using this, and I'm using about 12 to 14 inches of this for the lace that's going to go under my flower. And then I've got about 8 inches here that I'm going to be putting between my smaller and larger petal pieces on my flowers. Okay, so I'm going to do this one the same way. Some more thread here. Oh, come on. Come on, come on, come on. It's going to make my knot. And this is going to be the small, small piece I'm doing first. I'm just going to fold it in half the long way, stitch along my open edges. And I will take care of that big knot in my thread when I get done. I'm just going to take a couple stitches here to tack my thread in, unthread my needle again, as I don't like the big eyed needles for that reason. Um, and some of the bigger needles, they, they do, you know, if you wanted to use a bigger needle, some of them they make a narrower eye on. I don't have any of those. All I have are these right now. So we're going to make do with that. And this one, I cut this strip a little smaller. I think this strip is only like about an inch, and you're going to want at least an inch and a quarter, I think, on, on your smaller strip for the center of your flower. But I did not get this one cut exactly right. And, you know, that's 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 strictly up to you, too, how you decide to that you want to 
you know, how big you want to make each part of your flower. Oh, come on. The baby wipes, um, I've noticed, like, on the ones I had paint on, um, these are just distress inks and, and some other, some pigment inks and stuff on these. Uh, but one of them, the big puffy one I did, has, uh, it has um, paint on it. And the baby wipes get pretty stiff when you're doing paint. So that's something to keep in mind that you're going to have to push a little harder with the needle. And yet still try not to, not to tear your baby wipe. And I did tear this one in a couple places, but it's not going to matter. Okay, so I've got my, my stitches in now, my running stitch to gather with. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to freehand some petals. Just make the shape of petals like scallops, like when we use our edge punches. And I am not very good at this. And I didn't get this one very big, so I may have some kind of funky looking scallops here, but we're going to go with it because this is all I've got. I'm not going to run out in the middle of the video and try to ink up another one of these and get it dry in time. Um, I've also noticed, or I did last night, Usually when I'm using a baby wipe, you know, on a project, they seem to dry out so fast. Last night I had to take my heat gun and get these things to dry out. Because they just weren't drying. I was like, well, why can't you do that when I'm doing a project? And I need you, but no, you sit there and dry out on me. All right. Okay. And so I just now have this little scalloped edge run across. And this is something you would not have to do, but I do it. I... Go ahead and I snip my scallops also so that my petals will be free to move. Um, once again, being very careful not to snip the stitching you just put in. And trying not to rip the baby wipe. And they do rip surprisingly easy once they're all dried out. Okay, so now I have scallops and they're kind of badly done, but I'm, I'm trying to get this tutorial moving because I realize it's probably going to be long. All right, I'm just going to do the same as I did with the other one. I'm just going to take my thread and very carefully pull my gathers, and I'm going to gather it up. This one I am going, all right, this one I am going to be sewing my ends together on, and you can gather this one up tight, as tight as you can get it. I said just be very careful not to tear the baby wipe and I've got my two edges there and I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna sew those together lock my stitch just take a couple more tacking stitches in here like so cut off all the excess now, you, on this one, you would not have to glue it together either, but as you can see, the petals, my last petal got a little funky, so I'm just going to glue that petal to the back of my other one. So let's put a little bit of hot glue down here on the petals, and I'm just going to put that over and stick it together and move my gathers around a little bit. And it almost looks like I didn't for somehow, something happened and my gathers came out, but... I will fix that when I go to put the, the center in the little flower. Um, I'm going to real quick here move these scraps out of the way. So I'll do something stupid and get those stuck. Um, and then again, just take your baby wipe, um, the two sections you have, fold it in half. Oh, I didn't even get my knot in my thread. Okay. No, I used to do those dolls. I did a lot of hand sewing um, on the on the garments because that's how they were done back in the day. You know, there's a lot of hand sewing machines. Sewing machines were invented in the 1800s, and before that, everything was hand sewn. And I used to do what they called French hand sewing, and it was a lot of fun to do, but it could drive you crazy. Um, Basically, when you've sewn your seam into your garment, then the you know you always have the you always have the little you know you have your seam line and then you have the little you know excess fabric that usually press down flat, so that your seam is nice. 
Well, in that, what we what you did then was you took those little, like if you were doing a half inch seam, you'll have two little quarter inch uh, pieces of fabric that folded to the side where your seam was. And basically what we do with those is take them and fold those over again and then put in a hemming stitch, an invisible hemming stitch by hand in those. And I used to really enjoy doing that. I really liked it. Um, I don't know if I could even see it nowadays but to do it. But All right, now I'm going to take this and I'm just also, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to try to make some scallops in here. Try to get some nice ones. And don't worry if they're not all exactly even. And don't worry if you come up a little short and don't get the folded edge, you know, cut. You can always take your scissors back through there before you gather your flower up and uh, cut that out. You know, just snip across and, and slit it. And that works. And again, I am going to take where I, I have now made my scallops. Those didn't turn out too bad. Usually my scallops are, oh, they're terrible. I'm not a flower maker. Um, I think they're pretty and I like them a lot, but there's something about making them. I just, I don't know if it's the time involved or what, because, oh, there's some gorgeous flowers out there. I've seen so many here on YouTube. So many talented people out there making flowers. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing with this. I'm just going to start gathering it, and I'm going to gather it up as tight. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go ahead and gather it really tight. Okay. If you were if you were sewing the two pieces together and then gathering, you wouldn't want to go quite as tight on that because you want room to move it around your your uh, little felt base you're going to be putting it on. Okay. So, oops. Again, I've my circles aren't very good. Um, I kind of cut them out in a hurry. Again, I'm just going to since this is a two part part flower. I'm going to be just running my glue around one side, and I'm going to try to get this one a little farther onto my piece of felt. Get that glue string out of there. It's terrible. And I'm just going to poke it down. And sometimes your petals will do some kind of funky things, but it just adds, you know, more fluff to your flower. Let's put it that way. So I have that glued down on that side. Take my last piece of this and fold it over. Put my stitches in. Go through the loop to secure. Take another, I'm going to take another stitch on that one because I'm not sure. Yeah, it's slipping on me. So I'll do a couple more. Okay. Now, we're just going to go ahead and get our running stitch run through here. I think it goes faster actually making the flower in halves. And I like the outcome of them better because I'm not very good taking a whole full flower and positioning it very well on a little, you know, it's close to one inch piece of felt there. Okay. I'm sorry, I have my hands in my way. I'm just trying to get this done quick. Ah, I'll poke myself in the thumb. I really poke myself good. Usually I do. I usually have one good poke. Okay, whoops. Now I got my thread wrapped around my flower, so please be careful you don't do that. Okay, and I'm just going to once again attempt to make some scallops in the end. Wouldn't it be nice if these baby wipes were a little stiffer and you could just run them right like through an edge punch? <laughs> it would be so nice. I don't know. I don't think you'd have very good luck with that, though. It would be handy. Except I think the only scalloped edge punch I have right now is a really small one, so I wouldn't have very big scallops on my flowers. I'm just going to kind of cut that. Cut that one kind of funky. I'll just tuck it under when I go to simply because otherwise I would have one huge petal. 
on my flower. And I'm just, again, making my snips um, or my scallops meet in the center. I'm being careful not to cut my stitching down there at the bottom. Okay, and I'm going to take this, and again, I'm going to gather it up tight. Like, whoops, I'm out of camera. Gather it up good and tight like that. Take my needle through, make the loop, lock my stitch. And, whoops. And as you're, uh, this baby wipes can get pretty tough when you get more than one layer on there. Um, all right, so. I also have that. Now, on this one, I forgot to allow for the lace. Um, and I think I also pulled my threads this on this one. I got going here and I forgot to allow for the lace um, on this one. I'm sorry about that. I was going to show you the one with the lace. And now I'm just going to overlap my edges here where my two pieces of flour meet. Ah, get my fingers out of there. I'm getting everything stuck. Okay, so we have that going on. And if you want, when you're all done, to fluff up your flower, you can take your petals and just pull them apart, kind of, and that will definitely give more fluff to your flower. Okay. Um, since I forgot to do the lace on that one, I'm going to do the small piece and put it in between here um, so I can show you that. I am so sorry, you guys. I am really out of it this morning with this. I've got a fever. And I'm kind of out of it, but I wanted to get this tutorial up because a couple of you ladies had asked for it. And so, yeah, I wanted to get that up. So when we do the lace, we're going to do the same exact thing. We're just going to take our thread and go through. Just make a few stitches here to tack the thread in place. We're going to... I'm going right close to the edge of my lace. Um, and you can use pre-gathered lace on this too, but I would still gather it myself, even though it's pre-gathered. Because when you're working in that small of a spot, a lot of your pre-gathered lace does not like to, to form around, you know, the circular area. So I would definitely put some gathering stitches in that if you're using the pre-gathered lace. This is not a very pretty lace. Um, I was looking for some of my prettier laces, but... I have stored them away somewhere, and right now I can't find them, so we're just going to use this. It's going to be in the flower, so it's not going to show as much. But, you know, definitely if you're making them for your projects and stuff, you're going to want to probably use a very pretty lace on them. Or maybe not. This was just handy. I don't even know where I got it. I buy a lot of bags of laces at the thrift stores because it's just cheaper that way. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to gather this up. Maybe not quite all the way tight. I'll leave a little room here to move my gathers around on this lace, but I am going to take my two sides here, my two ends, where I start and finish, and I'm going to go ahead and sew those together. Okay, lock and stitch. Cut my threads. And on this one, I am going to run a bead of glue down one side of my lace here. Oh, this glue is getting all over everywhere. And then I'm just going to stick it together like that. Stick my fingers to it. And then we'll have a little lace ring like this. And then just kind of move your gathers around so they're even. I'm thinking my lace might almost be bigger than my flower there. All oh, these glue strings. Oh, terrible deals. All right, so now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to place glue all around the edge of my flower here. And I'm not very good at getting my flower center straight. That's something I really personally need to work on. Um, I get the flower done, but I don't get them straight always. So I'm going to kind of look at that. That looks pretty straight. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to push that down in there like so. So now we have our petals underneath. And this lace was a little too big. Um, you can't even see the petals under there. So next time I would either, I think I would cut one edge off and gather it, you know, like cut a quarter of an inch or better off of this. And then I would uh, gather it that way. 
with some pieces cut off or just use a shorter lace but like I said this is all I can find right now so my lace is bigger than my flower and I apologize for that um oh, we're out of glue all right okay and then I'm just going to take my smaller flower and I'm just going to kind of you know arrange my gathers and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put glue down over the lace And I'm just going to try to put my little flower centered on there as best I can. I guess that's not my strong point. It's getting my flowers even, so they kind of look funny. Okay, so this is what we've got. And again, you can take with a smaller flower also, and you can open up these petals like so. And just, you know, just, just take them where they're, they're snipped and just pull them apart. Obviously, on your flower, you would have a smaller size piece of lace here. And then if you wanted, you know, lace under your bigger flower, again, you would want to just gather the lace like this, join it in the ring, glue the ends. Glue it down onto your felt before you glue your flower petals down. Um, I have a great big pearl here, and I think I'm going to use that in the middle of this. Um, I'm so sorry, guys. I wasn't thinking when I did this lace. But, yeah, you would definitely want to use a little bit smaller of a lace on your flower. I'm just going to poke that guy down in there. And pretending this lace was a little shorter, you would see your flower petals through it. And as I've said before, just grab the edges, like so. Pull them open. And you've got a nice fluffy flower that way. Okay, and you can do, and do that too with the little top ones. A little time consuming, but it really adds to the flower. Okay, so that's it. Um, here's the two we made today. Um, you know, and really experiment. I think I'm going to try one more instead of cutting the scallops. I'm going to cut points and see what that turns out like. But yeah, use your imagination. Um, you know, go for it. See what you can come up with. Um, I'd love to see because it's a flower. You can do whatever you want with it. Um, I do apologize for not getting the lace, the right size lace to put on the flower. But I hope you get the idea of all of this. Um, I thank you all very much for joining me today. I hope that you all have a really good day. Bye-bye.